Hello, thank you. So I'll try and use my time to tell you about some, what I think are some new ingredients in this old problem of quantum Hall effect, which uh, keeps on delivering in my opinion. And a uh, new ingredient will be uh, electric quadrupole. pole. That uh, seems to be the fundamental reason that stabilizes things like flux attachment. Okay, we'll see, okay, oops, not working. Oh, it's not switched on. Yeah, okay, good. So the whole effect is usually thought of as part of electrical conductivity, but the real, the fundamental part of the whole effect is actually what's given by the Strader formula. It's a remarkable feature that if you hold the chemical potential fixed and change the magnetic flux, here represented by the Faraday tensor, the uh, electron density will change. And that's responsible for all these interesting things like edge states in the quantum hall. Uh, so in the clean limit of a 3D quantum hall system, we see that the chemical potential is in a gap. So the sigma xy is, uh, sigma ab is, is quantized. And uh, it's actually quantized on lattice planes, which is made clear by looking at the the 3D version of the quantum Hall effect, which is explicitly indexed by lattice planes to give you conductivity in ohms to the minus one meters to the minus one, okay? And uh, very simple topological formulas and the additional ingredient we'll see will be the Hall viscosity. So condensed matter has three subsystems, lattice, stuff to do with, with the Fermi surface and electromagnetic, electromagnetic uh, degrees of freedom. And if there's no low energy excitations in the Fermi surface, the electronic system is incompressible and has no, and the electrons have no autonomous low energy degrees of freedom of their own. So usually this means you're a band insulator where the, elect where the electron density is completely fixed by the local values of the Bragg vector fields, which determine the reciprocal, the Brillouin zone volume. And the low energy excitations are just fluctuations, the phonons are fluctuations of the Bragg vector field. Uh, in a, so in a band insulator, the electrons can't move relative to the lattice and the electronic, slated, electronic state is basically a slater determinant of, local, of maximally localized 1A orbitals. But in the quantum hole systems, some of the electrons get captured by the electromagnetic field. They get captured on lattice planes. It can either be a single lattice plane or a family like in a 3D version. And they're captured by the magnetic flux as expressed by the Faraday tensor. And unlike the electrons bound to the lattice, these electrons can flow. They are fluid, but they uh, don't have an autonomous fluid degree of their own. Their fluid properties are completely controlled by the electromagnetic field. So their flow velocity is just the drift velocity E over B. So the mechanism by which that magnetic flux captures electrons is Landau quantization to form Landau levels except with one orbital per, for a flux quantum through the plane. And Landau levels mean that umclap is suppressed. The electrons are going around in little orbitals in block space uh, and they have orbitals in real space, which are the image of that. Uh, but they, because of this, they don't know, they know they've lost all connection to the lattice because umclap processes, are, which are, are suppressed exponentially or worse, in fact, by Gaussian factors. So the umclap doesn't occur and we can treat crystal momentum of these electrons becomes like true momentum and the Landa levels become degenerate. And we can treat them in an effective continuum theory that ignores the lattice completely. So the key difference between the local orbitals in a Landau level, which are, which are centered in what's called a guiding center, and maximally localized 1A orbitals uh, in, a, in a band insulator, is that Landau orbitals can move adiabatically in the plane of the quantum Hall effect on which the electrons are, are bound. And this actually leads to the composite boson uh, picture of the abelian Chern-Simons and the abelian Chern-Simons gauge field, which goes back to work of, of, of uh, McDonald and Gerbin. So if we adiabatically drag a, a hole, an empty orbital, so it's movable, in other words, otherwise filled Landau level around the closed path, we pick up the Berry phase, which I guess Arovas, Wilczek, and Schrieffer uh, po pointed out uh, in um, 
which is basically the churn simons gauge field. Okay. And this is because these orbitals are mobile, unlike 1A orbitals. So in a, in a this is a, the, uh, the wave function of a filled lambda level with a single hole at position W, com complex position W. And the other electrons have to stay orthogonal or get out of the way of the empty hole as you move it around, which is what gives rise to the Berry phase. And this is a two plus one dimensional gauge field because the hole, unlike an electron, cannot live outside the plane on which it exists or fulfilled lambda level, okay? And because there's one electron per flux quantum, the Berry phase the hole picks up is equal in magnitude and opposite in sign to the Bohm-Maharana phase of an electron moving on the same path. And we also, as we see in semiconductors, holes are fermions. So exchange two of these holes continuously, you get a minus one factor. And, uh, and if there's another orbital inside the path, which is because if there's an extra orbital inside the path, an empty orbital, you pick up a, a factor of two pi. Well, a complete orbit is like two, two exchanges, which gives you pi. Okay. Oops, not, not moving. Yeah, not sure why it's not working. Not working either. Come on. What happened here? Okay. Go back now. Okay. <laughs> so a filled, or a filled orbital then is a fermionic hole plus a fermionic electron, which is a boson. And the exchange of two filled orbitals in a row, is a row exchange in the Slater determinant describing the filled lambda level is a row exchange plus a column exchange, therefore two factors of minus one. And it means it's a boson. And so this is the composite boson of the fractional of the whole effect, both integer and fractional. And it's similar to the bosonic description of 1D Fermi gases that it works both for the non-interacting case, but it has an immediate generalization to the interacting case, which the Slater determinant picture does not give you. So the initial discussion of the composite bosons then generalizes to the fractional case where instead of a single hole, you have Q holes forming a, like an empty bubble region. And in a background of filling factor P over Q, then if I exchange two of these size Q holes, I get a phase factor of minus one to minus one or plus one, minus one to the K, uh, where K is P times Q, which is the churn Simons, uh, the integer quantized churn Simons, abelian churn Simons coupling constant. Actually, this shows you, it's been a longstanding issue that in a in Chern Simon theory, it seemed to be quantization of the coupling came from, um, uh, from Lie algebras in Witten's treatment, and the abelian didn't seem to have anything to quantize it. This is actually the quantization of the abelian Chern Simon theory. So when you put the particles in it, the, 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 the statistics of exchange of the holes cancels the statistics of exchange of the particles, and you get the composite boson if you satisfy the selection rule that minus one to the churn simons number is minus one to the number of particles if they're electrons or plus one otherwise. So a new previously unrecognized ingredient of this story of quantum hole effect is that the composite bosons of the quantum hole fluid carry an intrinsic primitive electric quadrupole moment that characterizes their geometry or shape. And there are a number of interesting consequences that follow from this, and you can see in this paper on the archive. Okay, quadrupoles. Because of the way physics is taught, most people do not know the correct definition of the quadrupole. They usually learned it in physics 103, when they did Laplace's equation or something equivalent and learned that a, a sphere of charge looks like a point charge at long distances. This is the Laplace equation, Root, but it's not telling you about the full quadrupole. This is what they what people call a so-called traceless variant, and I'll tell you why it's so-called not truly traceless, which is just two dipoles, you know, put put head to toe. The correct or full form of the quadrupole is the so-called primitive version, um, which is basically the variance of the electric charge distribution of a of a of a local distribution of charges relative to the center of charge. I define it, there's another option besides primitive and traceless, which is whether or not to include the factor of a half. I include the factor of a half because that makes the energy in an electric field look much nicer, but the energy of a quadrupole 
in an electric field is just the quadrupole dotted with the indices contracted with the gradient of the electric field. This is a symmetrized gradient, so it's a part of the electric field that does not contribute to the Faraday law. And if all charges are the same sign, these quadrupoles are either positive definite or negative definite. Okay. Ah, God. Is it just a delay or? Okay. Come back. Okay, that's going the wrong way. Okay, another feature of bad education, which I won't try to reform the old timers about, but maybe the young people will take it to heart. Is the lack of a difference a difference between uh, differentiating between upper and lower indices, contravariant and covariant, upper lower, contravariant displacements, lower derivatives. If if you have Newtonian physics, you've got rotational symmetry, and and you can just move indices around to your heart's content by contracting them with the tens with the the Euclidean metric or its inverse. But every tensor has a correct has a natural position of its indices. And for example, the, the quadrupole is a symmetric tensor. So the notion of a trace of a symmetric tensor is actually mathematical nonsense because only a mixed index tensor can have a trace where you contract an upper and a lower index, okay? But actually what I found in general is respecting the positions of tensor indices make everything simpler because you can immediately see a correct equation from an incorrect equation and you've got two sets of indices to balance. So. If you don't like differential forms, which is the kind of stuff that the hot, hot mathematical inclined people like, use tensor indices correctly. Okay. <laughs> so what is the traceless quadrupole? It's, well, if you take Laplace's equation and you find the far field, you have to divide through by the quadratic form. But if the electron charge density uh, Fourier transform is also a quadratic quadrupole, a quadratic form, then you see the part which is uh, part of the quadrupole, which is proportional to the, the permittivity tensor of the surrounding medium has no contribution to the far field. This shows you it's completely not a, a fundamental definition because it's a quadrupole plus the medium in which it's imbibed. The full quadrupole is the fundamental definition. Okay. So the foundation of our understanding of the quantum Hall effect, the fractional quantum Hall effect is Laughlin's wave functions. And it ex explicitly exhibits a number of key features, in particular flux attachment. And numerical studies showed it worked, but why has never properly been explained. People rely on, on, on statements like, oh, it's a clever wave function that keeps the, the particles apart, which is, of course, true, but it's uh, not an explanation of anything. So, in fact, Laughlin also told us in his original paper that the quantum Hall effect was produced by an incompressible electron fluid. To my knowledge, no one has really taken that, those words to heart since then. And the fluid dynamics of the quantum Hall effect have not been properly explored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, wave, it's a quadrupole that does the job. Uh, the viscosity uh, is viscosity is a linear response of the stress in a fluid to a gradient of its flow velocity. And incompressible quantum fluids can have a, uh, a dissipationless whole viscosity, which was pointed out by Avron and co in the 90s. Basically, if the fluid is flowing in a, in a channel, there's a gradient of the velocity near the edges of the channel, and they, they exert an external force pushing on the walls of the channel pushing outwards. So you can push inwards, so the whole viscosity pushes outwards, but it's in op it's, it's right angles to the direction of flow, so it's dissipationless. Okay. So after correctly expressing the whole viscosity as very curvature with respect to strain, uh, Avron and co went on to apply a trick that many people have learned from taking stress by people in particle theory like to take stress, the stress energy tensor by taking the derivative of the matter action with respect to the metric. That may be true if you have Lorentz invariance or something similar for Cauchy is true if you have rotational invariance, but stress is nothing to do with rotation. Stress and strain are non-uniform translations. It's only when you add some additional ingredient, which in this case is a spurious ingredient of a point symmetry that you can start to relate things to uh, uh, derivatives with respect to a metric. And, uh, as I said, the, it's, 
all the tools for actually doing the correct calculation were available, but they did a toy model involving Newtonian particles and took a derivative with respect to the Euclidean metric. And this gave rise to a, what in my view is a, a, is a crazy idea. I didn't think it was crazy until I learned it was crazy, of course, but that quantum, the whole viscosity was the response of the fluid to variations of the background geometry. No, viscosity is the relation, the stress of the, the fluid as response to gradients of the flow velocity. You don't need a neutron star to, nearby to measure um, measure quantum Hall effect using gravitational mechanics. Right? So I don't want to go through the derivation or anything because it's boring, but uh, the basic result turns out to be when you put, especially putting the tensor indices in the right place, that the, the viscosity is a, a, a rank two, rank four tensor, but it's the two upper and two lower indices. It's is traceless with respect to the, the two on either side, and it's in, out, odd under, under taking the first set, exchange with the second set. It ends up being a formula which is just involves the Faraday tensor and the electric quadrupole density, the primitive one. The Faraday tensor gives its odd under time reversal. The, the quadrupole has got nothing to do with handedness, so it's not it's even under time reversal. So the whole viscosity formula actually reveals the electric quadrupole density as, density as a fundamental, but previously unrecognized part of this whole QHG story. So the quantum Hall effect is actually assembled from fundamental units, these composite bosons, which are analogous to the unit cell in the crystal, the basic unit. And they exclusively occupy a little area of the 2D plane, and they have a preferred shape which they can respond to. If you try to squish them, they like to go back to their preferred shape to lower the energy. But uh, anyway, this is the, the picture I would come up with for the thing. So the, so the composite boson occupies an area which is quantized in units of the area per flux quantum, but the charge distribution inside it is not uniform, okay? And that's what gives rise to the quadrupole moment. Okay, I'm going the wrong way. Oh God. Yeah, let me get, skip that. So what are the quadrupoles? There are two types of quadrupoles. There's the quadrupoles in the integer Hall effect, which actually the quadrupole formed the charge distribution of the Landau orbit around the guiding center. The quantum Hall systems have a gap for, uh, when the fluid is stationary, they have a, a gap for uh, excitations that carry electric polarization and indeed, by definition, the guiding center is a time average position of the of the center of the of the Lambda orbit. So there's no dipole moment, but the is a quadrupole moment. But that that's fixed by the band structure. It can be electric fields can slightly deform it, as we'll see. But the fractional case is more interesting because the the correlate the, the quadrupole is formed by flux attachment. A correlation hole or void forms in the fluid and particles go into the center of the fluid. There's great analogy with uh, what happens in a quantum solid. In some sense, you could say a quantum solid, the particles have broken permutation symmetry because each particle in a fluid, in a regular fluid, there's no, there's no, no natural origin to any particle. In a quantum solid, every particle has a natural origin, which is the center of its unit cell. And in the quantum Hall effect, every particle, every electron has a, of the fractional case as a natural origin, which is the center of its flux attachment void. Okay, so it's very similar conceptually to a quantum solid. And uh, the other interesting things about the quadrupole, the, quadru the guiding center quadrupole is an emergent quantity. It's odd under particle hole transformations. And actually that leads to an interesting conjecture that if you are projected into a Landau level, uh, you can't have a quantum Hall effect without having a a quadrupole, a guiding center quadrupole, which rule which rules out some things like the so-called TFAFI, okay, and tells you about what happens in a half field lambda level. So the properties of a quadru fluid with a quadrupole are quite interesting. A number of things follow that. First of all, there's a just as a, a, a region of polarization, if if it abruptly terminates, has a surface charge density. A region of quadrupolar fluid has a surface dipole density normal to the edge of the fluid. And if the quadrupole density is varying, which it will do in response to the electric field, then there's a kind of bound charge which 
partially screen things that, that tends to smooth out the charge distribution of things like topological defects in the problem. Okay. And you can see at the edge of the, the edge dipole is easy to see in the, in the integer Hall effect, the guiding center occupation is a set function going up to the edge, but the lambda orbits push the charge distribution to give you like an error function at the edge, it pushes charge outwards. In the Laughlin state, the charge is pushed inwards, it's at the center of the droplet, and you see again in the conformal field theory treatment of the edge, you can see there's this excavated hole which pushes the dipole inwards. So all these things follow directly from the from the quadrupole. Okay. So, so the quadrupole I, I would propose is a fundamental um, part of the story. And in the fractional quantum hole effect, it's actually emergent dynamical quadrupole field or fields. There's one for each hierarchical fluid, it turns out, that, uh, that emerges when flux attachment happens. And um, it's kind of like the Goldstone mode of flux attachment. There's no broken symmetry, so it's gapped, but it's a new degree, new dynamical degree of freedom that emerges that's not present unless you have flux attachment. Let's move on. Okay, so that's the Drader relation is the big deal. Let's move on. Chad Simon theory, it's, so let's not do that. So let's just look at a, a few of the pictures. Oops. So the picture of the Laughlin state and is a, you make a hole, a void, which contains three fluxes. And it's got a set of three energy levels inside it. Um, and you put an electron in and it goes to the, the central one, which is the lowest. And if you compute if it's got rotational symmetry, which is a toy model feature, but we can use it. Uh, if if you then compute the, uh, the the angular momentum relative to the uniform background of one third, you find this thing has a carries a spin of a, a azimuthal spin of minus one. Okay, and for example, the two fifth state is similar. You have five fluxes, and now you start to fill the things up in the order of the Pauli principle inside the droplet. And uh, okay, this is uh, this is a larger quadrupole. The quadrupole turns out for rotational invariance turns out to be proportional to the spin quantum number here. And um, okay, so it's a more stable. There's more energy gain than this two fifths one here. But um, okay, so then where do composite fermions come into this picture? We can think of the composite bosons as the analog of unit cells in a quantum solid. If I dope the solid, I stick an extra electron in one of those unit cells. The unit cell containing the electron doesn't kind of move around. As in the solid, they're all glued down, which they're not in this liquid. But what happens is the electron hops from cell to cell. So what's happening in the when I dope the one-third Laughlin state, I create each time I dope it, I actually create three droplets of two-fifth state, as you'll see in a minute. And if uh, a two-fifth state can be viewed as adding a a, a composite Fermi onto the original one third droplet. And so that can hop. So if there's two next to each other, the fermion, the extra electron can hop dragging two fluxes with it. So it's actually a composite Fermi and that hops, some hops between the two fifths dopants of this uh, one third quantum hall state. Oh God, which way that way? Oops. So if I add charge to the one third state, each I basically add an electron, I stick it into one of these droplets, so there's two in, there's two in the, uh, a three, a size three droplet, but that will low, lower its energy by combining with four neutral droplets around it and split into two of these two, two fifth droplets. And uh, similarly, if I do the, if I start with the two fifth state, if I keep on adding them, eventually the two fifth droplets will coalesce and condense and you'll get isolated one third droplets floating around. And indeed, if I remove an electron from the two fifth state, I create a, an object with one electron in five, and that will couple with two others and, and, and release uh, five copies of the one third droplet, which each have one fifth charge minus a fifth charge relative to background. So you can get a consistent picture out of all this. Composite fermions also have a, a, a particle hole. They, they also have a, a quarter pole moment. Very, this is particularly important for the half filled Lando level, where we, in the lowest Lando level, we get a, a Fermi liquid of composite fermions, which is still a, still no, no concrete um, microscopic model has emerged. 
And there are actually two kinds, which are part of the whole composite of each other, which have opposite quadrupoles. And they act, if it's rotationally invariant, one is SZ minus a half, other is SZ plus a half. So there's a kind of pseudo spin associated with the composite fermions. And the, this naturally shows you how, why you would like to condense to form things like the Mooread Fafian state or the anti Fafian state if two equal types of composite fermions coalesce. They originally contributed a, a total quadrupole proportional to one minus one. <laughs> But when they combined, the quadrupole is doubled. And my claim is that the formation of the quadrupole, which gives you the, the, en the energy comes from moving the electrons to the center to keep away from the other electrons. So formation of the quadrupole is the energetics that drives uh, quantum Hall flux attachment. So this will also work for two, two of the other quadrupoles, the particle hole, trans trans uh, particle hole equ equivalents to coides to form a drop of the antifafian. <laughs> But there's no energy to be gained to be formed the so-called T-Fafian, which was proposed to be a, uh, a particle hole symmetric version of quantum hole effect, which hasn't been seen in any, any case where you've projected completely into the lowest Lando level. Numerical exper uh, sorry, experiments by Modi Heiblum and co. seem to show something like it. But this would argue that you can only get lambda level mixing can, it would be required for you to actually see what Moti sees. And again, to make a party a whole, these things have to kind of combine and they all have, should have different momenta if you want to have a Fermi liquid out of these things. So that basically comes from, from mixing the mixing the, the mixing to the, the, the up and down quadrupoles when they, they are, since they have different inversion symmetries, when you mix them, you get a dipole moment. Let's quickly move on. Okay, rotationally invariant toy models. A lot of work has been done. A lot of this work arose from trying to remove from the quantum hall theory, the notion of rotational invariance, which is a toy model feature not present in condensed matter, but everyone likes it because it makes everything easier to calculate. And toy models like Laughlin state have it, but uh, it's very misleading because people looked at all this stuff and didn't really see what the generalization to not rotationally invariant was. Uh, you can rotationally invariant systems, you can put on the sphere and do nice things with them, but I don't really have time to talk about it. Um, basically, when the message, if you have a rotationally invariant system, the quadrupole mode is basically quantized by a spin. This is the angular momentum of the composite boson. It's not the angular momentum of the electron as Reed, point, as, as, as Reed proposed, and it's not the shift that when and Z proposed, because this, is two, this guy is, 2S is an integer, which is crucial for being able to put it on the sphere, because only the so-called when Z term, when you put it on the sphere, is actually just the berry phase of the of this spin. And it's absolutely fundamental. It has to be have the regular quantum numbers of a 3D spin for you to have a, berry, a proper berry phase as it rotates. Okay. What can I say? All this Gaussian curvature stuff comes out of the formula. Let's see. OK, one last thing. What about churn insulators? So this raises the question of what happens in the churn insulator? And does it have a whole viscosity? And one can analyze this from the the, the, the weak field limit where you can look at the lambda level structure. And it turns out that uh, the formula works that the core viscosity still vanishes as B tends to zero. Some people were trying to guess it might be, you know, proportional to the Berry curvature or something like that. It, it, you can actually extract it. Uh, I guess I don't really have time to show you too much, but let me just mention this. So I recently learned that uh, the quadrupole density actually also shows up in band theory. And probably not many people know that, but uh, I learned it from Evo Souza. If I actually want to calculate the whole viscosity in this region here, when I at zero magnetic field, this is the toy model I introduced as a as a as a churn insulator, there's a background hole that the 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 there's a whole uh, um a quadrupole density coming from the block band. And then as you add Landau levels, you subtract or add charges to the block bands, you get the, the fluid coming out of it. But it turns out that in block theory, the thing that people have been calling the, uh, this is the integral of the, of the, of the quantum geometric tensor or whatever, this is the integral of the metric 
over the Bruin zone, the full metric here. This is actually just the, this is, sounds very mysterious when you talk about it as the quantum metric, uh, but this is actually just the quadrupole density of the block bands. And it has, all has uh, so the full quadrupole density will be coming a static part from the block bands and the part coming from the fluids, which is quite a kind of interesting thing. The dynamical thing, uh, some that's a, uh, the quadrupoles of Bay and SO2, comma one Lee algebra. I guess Sondi and Co. also looked at this. And um, uh, let me just get to one point here. So the quadrupoles come in two species, either positive definite or negative definite. In the two fifth state, there are two fluids, each of which has a has one has the same sign of quadrupole for the two seventh state. One has one sign, the other has the other sign. Laughlin and anti Laughlin have different signs, etc. So a particle quadrupole moment. Uh, guiding center quadrupole is opposite sign for a whole type one. And the dynamics of these emergent gauge fields are almost the same as uh, dynamics of a ferromagnet with a Zeeman field, which gives you a preferred direction for the ferromagnet to point in, which gives it a gap. Here, the, the shape of the quadrupole has a preferred value, which minimizes the correlation energy of the system. And that is acts just like a Zeeman energy to give you a preferred shape around which small fluctuations can take place. There are a few differences, like the if you have a magnon in a ferromagnet, the magnon reduces the magnitude of the order parameter. In the quadrupolar dynamics, the magnon equivalent increases it because the ladder of states goes from s to plus infinity rather than s to minus s. But it's basically very similar. And I think I'm probably out of time. Anything? Yeah, so at the edges of systems, the quadrupole will adjust itself to partially screen. If I squeeze on the edge on the channel in which the stuff is flowing, I can manage to push it in. The quadrupoles will deform. They'll increase the surface dipole moment pointing outwards, and they'll act to to to, re to react against the force of squeezing the channel in. So it'll compress the system a little bit, but it won't actually move any charge away from the edge. It'll just kind of increase the dipole moment at the edge by, by, the, by the whole viscosity. So it's actually quite physical. And uh, similarly, if you have a, uh, a point defect, like a topological defect, uh, you can expect, depending on the sign of the defect, uh, these kind of uh, deformations of the shape, which will kind of, in exactly the same way as skirmions in a ferromagnetic quantum hole spread the charge, it also spreads the charge by the, the bound charge of the, and the formula for the bound charge is the double divergence of the quadrupole tensor. And that can be related to that. That turns out to be the, the, the formulas which people obtained on, on spheres with Gaussian curvature and extra charge turn out to be just special cases of this much more general formula. I guess uh, just go back to that and I'll leave you at that point. Yeah, so the, I'll leave you at that point. Yeah, okay. Uh, if I naively try to calculate the Holmes positive from the Google formula, I need to take derivatives of the derivative of the lattice displacement. It's not the symmetrized lattice displacement, it's not the straight. Is that the same? Is it connected to the fact that you're saying that I need the primitive? Quadrupole and not the traceless quadrupole? Yeah, there's no, in fact, there's no such thing as a traceless quadrupole. Okay. Um, the, uh, and I, as I say, in this area, people are beginning to realize about the primitive quadrupole also in the band structure thing. Most people I talk to have no idea about the difference between primitive and traceless. There's a nice uh, web page on the NIST site where someone has put up a page called a tutorial on the quadrupole. And there are actually four versions primitive or uh, or traceless, which I don't like, or whether or not to include a factor of a half. I like the factor of a half because it makes the energy look good without a factor in it. The people working in the in the block band structure don't use the factor of a half, but um, they're probably more of them than me, but I might have to adjust to that. But basically you get nice formulas for the energy of a point particle in a field is the electric potential at that point. The energy of a dipole in a field is the dot product with the electric field at that point. The energy of a quadrupole in a field is the full uh, quadrupole tensor with the um, 
the, der the derivative of the electric field, the symmetrized derivative of the electric field. Yeah. Yeah, it's energetics. Yeah, it, it, in those cases, uh, you have a, an importance for rotational asymmetries of some kind, right? Uh, certainly, the quantum Hall effect involves a uh, a quadrupole without reference to any point symmetries of any kind. It's fundamental. Uh, there's no rotational symmetries of any kind are uh, uh, little bits of extra dressing that you can add. It's a bit like, uh, you know, we heard about height. I know you like, uh, you know, the uh, the pneumatics. Well, the, 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 no, a pneumatic involves having a symmetry to break. But the, but no symmetry here, right? In generically, uh, if you have an oblique crystal, you have an oblique crystal. There's no such symmetry, right? No, then condensed matter. The generic condensed matter should be uh, no symmetries, right? Extra extra point symmetries, of course, are inherited from the fact that atoms are round, so it's nicer. So when you're assembling crystals, you have a tendency to form things like cubic crystals, but there is no need to have... Uh, um, the only symmetry I would like to invoke, which is not for a single layer at least, is actually the twofold rotation symmetry, which has got nothing to do with the metric. It's the inversion symmetry. Which is a, a, but yeah, you could of course add any things. There could be a, there could be some, uh, you know, fluid that had uh, the, the the fluid I showed the um, the uh, the graphene light toy model I introduced has a fixed fold symmetry, uh, and in that case, uh, still the arguments about quantization of the spin are gone. The metric, of course, will the 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 shape of the tensor will reflect the point symmetry, the sixfold point symmetry, but none of the none of the re the results from um, the rotational group are just vanished. It happens in the, in in graphene, for example, perfect simple graphene without a gap. Uh, the second lambda level is a fifty fifty mixture, or the lowest the zero mode is spin a half. The second lambda level is spin one not spin, and it's a 50-50 mixture of spin three halves and spin half in a rotational picture. But when you go toward, the, the rotation is broken when you have the gap open, and when you go towards the gap, it turns in, it turns continuously from 50-50, a half plus three halves to 50, to 100% three halves. So the numbers are no longer quantized that people like for the rotational things. So whether or not you have a point symmetry is not really particularly interesting, right? Yeah. Uh, because the uh, because the if you project into a lambda level and have a two-body interaction, well, first of all, there's a gap for there's a gap for anything that carries. Uh, um, yeah. 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 Certainly, if you have a bilayer system, you could have something in between. But if I go to a single lambda level. Uh, the fact that the particle there's only one kind of one kind of guiding center, the two-body interaction by itself guarantees inversion symmetry, even if the underlying form factors are not inversion symmetric. So you automatically, in a simple model, a one-component quantum Hall fluid, one third, two fifths, etc., you've and you're in a single lambda level, you've automatically got. Uh, inversion symmetry in the guiding center projected Hamiltonian, even because the, the form factor enters the form factor times its complex conjugate, which, uh, which is inversion symmetry. Yeah. Yeah, go on. I'll let someone else. 
I'll let someone else deal with that here. Yeah. 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 I see that you're trying to use your pictures as a possible to give a construction of the ground separation. That would be one way of saying what do I mean by saying that's possible. The second thing is I have a low energy theory, which is naturally described as being possible. So at that point, the discussion was if you wanted to have a low energy theory, the easiest thing to imagine your object to be at a critical point. Then you can make the mathematics mm -hmm. if you say these are the gas phase, then there's no matter to do it. So that's what that's true. The first just going back to it, your quadruple type construction is a lot like the read version of the function, which is to say you insert plus and put stuff down. Yeah. But in that language, you describe it as a super phase, not even my picture to what looks sort of almost like a crystal in between the attacks. Which is a, it, it's a it's an analog of, a, of a, but it's not a superfluid in the sense of a broken symmetry state. Yeah. Yeah. No, the the the, the bosons are condensed, but uh, they're condensed in this Trent Simons way, which is like Anderson Higgs and things. Yeah. How do I talk about low energy when I've got near a critical point? And if you break all symmetry, yeah, there there are, but it it turns out well the model I think Jolie found some potential where you actually can can get the uh, the 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 sound where the 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 McDonald Platzman Gervin McDonald Platzman mode to go beyond go below the the bottom of the two roton continuum and. Okay. Yeah, he I, he was trying to. I mean, I haven't. I need to investigate that more. More. He didn't manage to get it to go all the way down. I don't think. But uh, he got it. Managed to get it to below the bottom of the continuum. And you see, on the sphere, you see what you actually not what you expect. And quite nice results. Yeah. 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 Yeah.